During each topic, there will be a short quiz for you to try. You can participate with us by joining the Nearpod. Here is the code on the screen. And whenever a short quiz is available, there will be a small icon to notify you of it. And of course, the questions will be asked at the end of presentation. And yeah, let's start. So now with the first topic, cyberbullying, presented by Sema. And as you can see, here's a short quiz for you to start. OK, so first of all, let's define cyberbullying. What is cyberbullying? On the internet, cyberbullying takes various forms. Cyberbullying includes sending hateful messages or even death threats to children, spreading lies about them online, making nasty comments on their social networking profiles and or creating a website to bash their looks or reputation. Cyberbullying differs from schoolyard bullying. Teachers can't intervene on the internet. When cyberbullying happens online, there is no one to filter it. And cyber bullies don't witness their victims' reactions the way they might if they insulted others to their faces. They don't see you crying, which may make it easier for them to continue. The best foundation for protecting against cyber bullying is to be comfortable talking to your children about what is going on in their lives online and in real life and how to stand up to bullies. Cybersecurity software and specialized apps for monitoring your child's online and mobile activity can help, but nothing will replace an open dialogue. Next slide. Cyberbullying effects. Cyberbullying causes significant emotional, psychological, and physical distress, just like any other victim of bullying. Cyberbullied kids experience depression and anxiety. Fear, increased feelings of sadness and loneliness, changes in sleep and eating patterns, loss of interest in activities they used to enjoy, and of course, low self-esteem. They also may experience physical symptoms, mental health issues, health complaints, and struggle academically, such as decreased academic achievement in their GPA, and standardized test scores and school participation. They are more likely to miss, skip, or drop out of school. These issues may persist into adulthood. Kids who bully can also engage in violent and other risky behaviors into adulthood. Kids who bully are more likely to abuse alcohol and other drugs in adolescents and as adults, and they might also get into fights, vandalize property, and drop out of school, have criminal convictions and traffic citations as adults, and be abusive toward their partners, poses, or children as adults. Media reports often link bullying with suicide. However, most youth who are bullied do not have thoughts of suicide or engage in suicidal behaviors. Although kids who are bullied are at risk of suicide, bullying alone is not the cause. Many issues contribute to suicide risk, including depression, problems at home, and trauma history. This risk can be increased further when these kids are not supported by parents, peers, and schools. Bullying can make an unsupportive situation worse. Next, please. Cyberbullying real life examples. Haley Lambert, a 30 year old, took her life due to cyberbullying. She suffered from epilepsy and her classmates taunted her for that. This in school bullying continued through online platforms and forums. They had often told her to kill herself because of her condition. At one point, a classmate left her a voicemail saying, I hope you died. Haley couldn't take the bullying anymore and killed herself. Another example of cyberbullying, which is David Molak, who became the target of a cyberbullying campaign. Bullies at school would keep sending him abusive and hurtful messages, leading to him suffering from severe depression. At first, David loved to work out and was the life of the party. Everything changed after the torrent, torment took its hold on his mental health. He lost enthusiasm and interest in anything. When he was 15 years old, he hung himself in his backyard and avoided the bullying. 
Okay, cyberbullying statistics worldwide. The vast majority, 90% of teens, agree that cyberbullying is a problem. And 63% believe that this is a serious problem. A 2018 survey of children's online behavior found that approximately 60% of children who use social media have witnessed some form of, of bullying and that for various reasons, most children ignore the behavior altogether. And according to an Ofted organization, as of February 2018, nearly half, 47% of all young people have been the victims of cyberbullying. Social media and online games are today's virtual playground. And that is where most Teacher, cyberbullying- This meeting is, uh, is for girls. Teacher, why, why did the, they say for us uh, to join at uh, 11, at, at, uh, at 11 uh, p.m. how are you? Muhammad Talib? Muhammad? Muhammad Talib, thank you for joining. Uh, actually, this is a public workshop. Anyone can join. You're most welcome to join. But please do not interrupt the girls. Okay, this is an awareness workshop. Please listen to the information they're going to tell you. Mute yourself. Yes, of course. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Abdul Rahman. Yes, no problem. Okay. So, social media and online uh, uh, games are today's virtual playground, as we said, and that is where much cyberbullying takes place, and it's operating 24 7. Children can be ridiculed in social media exchanges or in online gaming. Their player personas can be subjected to incessant attack turning the game from an imaginative adventure into a humiliating ordeal that escalates into cyberbullying across multiple platforms in real life. 61% of teens who reported being bullied say it was because of their appearance. Personal appearance seems to be the most common reason of cyberbullying. Followed by intelligence, with 25%, racism goes for uh, 15%, and is also a frequent tool for discrimination, as well as mocking someone because of their financial difficulties with 15% and religion goes for 11%. Next slide. How to prevent cyberbullying. As a student, make sure your profiles are private and never share any personal information with anyone. Keep your passwords to yourself and do not give anyone your password unless it is your parents. Don't ask, answer nasty comments, threatening messages. It just makes it worse. Tell an adult about it and don't open messages from unknown usernames. It could be a bully. Don't share information you wouldn't want someone to know. Don't send mean messages. It makes you a bully yourself and help others that are getting bullied. As a teacher, Make your students aware of the consequences cyberbullying can have for both the victim and the bully. Ensure the students that it is not tattling to tell a teacher of them being bullied and teachers are aware of any case of cyberbullying. Ensure students' confidentiality if they tell a school authority about a case of cyberbullying so that the student is more likely to make others in a greater power aware and ready to deal with the situation. The teacher should be trained to deal with situations dealing with cyberbullying. So they are prepared by looking for certain signs and triggers of bullying or cyberbullying. And the teaching staff should focus on a healthy social climate in the school so bullying in any forms is less likely to occur. As a parent, don't let your very little children have a computer in their room. Put the family computer computer in a public place. Make sure you know your child's passwords. Make an account on the site in which the child is signing up for, for getting a feel for the site. Restrict children to certain parts of the website. Don't rely only on parental controls. And make sure that if there is something online that makes them scared, uncomfortable, or worried, they'll be open to inform an adult. And finally, as a principal, a principal can ban bringing electronic devices in the school unless it is a property of the school. 
a principal could also make the rules on cyberbullying more strict and or enforce the rules so when cyberbullying occur, the deserved penalty would be given. A principal should make everyone aware of the consequences of bullying. A principal should also make sure that everyone in the school have read and signed their discipline code and acceptable use policy. So the bullies, of course, will get into even a bigger trouble because they've signed for a contract. A principal can stop cyberbullying by getting permission from students' parents when they are in school in order to monitor what they are saying on their phones and texting on school grounds. And lastly, a principal can also talk to the teachers after the school so they can see if anything is suspicious in the class. Thank you. Now Thank you so with our second now You're with our welcome. second Teacher. topic child exploitation presented by Hanif. And as you can see, here is the second short quiz for you to try with the code mentioned on the screen. Okay. As you just mentioned, I'm going to explain and introduce you to the topic that is child exploitation. Firstly, what is child exploitation? Well, exploitation in general is the act of selfishly taking advantage of someone or a group of people to profit from them or otherwise benefit oneself. And child exploitation is basically when a child is given an award by someone, whether it's a gift, money, affection, just anything, in exchange for performing any work, labor, or even crime. According to the situation, children may even start to obey without receiving anything in return. Next slide. Children, victims in our society. Suppose that you plan to steal money. Which target is uh, the easiest for you? Well, in all cases, children are the easiest target for criminals. Children are weak and immature. They are yet to process their growth in life. They are dependent and they need parental care. They are easy to deceive, scare, control, and satisfy. Unfortunately, because of that nature of children, in our society, children are continuously exploited. The internet upgraded child exploitation and even normalized it in some cases. Adults these days need to be informed regarding child exploitation to avoid doing it without realizing it. These pure beings are victims in our vast world, so we need to protect them well in order to protect the coming generations. How does the internet make child exploitation easier? Well, as we all know and experience, the internet had made all contact ways flexible and more convenient, which goes the same for criminals. It definitely made it easier for them to reach their targets. Stealing identities is simple on the internet. Some people might take an identity of a child close their age and befriend them to drag them into the crime scene. So you have to be careful with who your child takes as a friend. Next slide. How to identify child exploitation? Well, sometimes child exploitation can be much simpler than that. Remember that anything that involves deceiving the child and to do some kind of work he or she is incapable of doing is considered child exploitation. You have to remember that child exploitation involves completely no merit for the child, thus it is an unfair treatment. And here are some signs children uh, show. Firstly, and the most obvious sign is having money they cannot explain. Of course, you need to track down from where and how did your child get this money. Being quiet and bottling up. Sorry, I'm admitting someone. No. And bottling up. Uh, of course, child exploitation will affect how the child thinks and behaves. And it all is at all on his or her mental state. Fear and nightmares. Hiding their devices, the child might have been threatened to keep quiet, so keep that in mind. Wanting to be alone too often, and that sign of fear. Next slide. Parents exploiting children on social media. Yes, I said it before. Adults these days need to be informed regarding child exploitation to avoid doing that without realizing it. And yes, parents are no exception. Parents can commit child exploitation without realizing it as well, which is why we need to spread awareness about this tragedy. 
When you make, when you take videos or pictures of your child, do not send them to anyone. If you know your child is uncomfortable with you doing that, remember, live the moment, then live the moment and not record it. You can record these moments only to show them to the child in the future as memories. You do not have to post it online anywhere. These are, uh, there are parents who manage social media accounts for their children. Well, that gives them, I'm sorry. Well, that gives them uh, fame and money, which is basically using the child for self merit. So that's called child exploitation and a crime at that. About managing accounts for children, let's say that your child wanted to make a YouTube channel. Here, all you can do is to let your child do whatever they want with their YouTube channel. It's the child's right after all. You can support your child as a parent by recording the videos and provide them help if they ask for it. However, do not ever force the child to act in an unnatural way in their videos. Avoid storyboarding and staging videos for them and let them be as natural as possible in their videos. Next slide. When and how to act. Of course, privacy is one of the child's rights. You have to keep that in mind. But when your child shows any of the signs provided previously, take immediate action. Remember to reassure your child and do not scold them first. Search for who is texting them or ask the child if he is willing to talk. Immediately report to the available security services provided. Do not forget that the UAE has child protection centers and that you can report to them anytime. You can report child abuse and exploitation through a link. I will leave it to you in the chat box later. Preventing it as a parent. Know the proper time you, to give your child advice with social media access. Social media platforms make sure to research their users in order to provide the best security systems. So make sure to read their terms and conditions well when you are creating an account for your child and take in consideration the age requirement provided by the app. Do not allow your child to access any application that does not allow someone his or her age to be a user in it. Do not allow your child to befriend anyone older than them. Remind your child that he or she does not have to reply to each and every single message coming to them. Be as close as possible with your child and to make it easier for them to talk or confess. Be patient with them. To children, preventing it as a child. Do not talk to strangers or older people. There are tons of dangerous people on, in the internet out there and we have no idea of the real identities of such people. Please always talk to your parents about any problem because they are responsible for you. They know well that they need to give you your privacy and they are unable to open your chats and search through them. So please be cooperative and report any sort of problem to your parents. Thank you. Now with our third topic, privacy invasion and identity theft presented by Ilaf. And as we mentioned before, there will be a third quiz on this topic. And since we have new attendees, I'd love to let you all know that the questions should be asked at the end through Nearpod as well. Thank you, Zainab. Thank you so much, Hanin, for your delightful information. Ilaf, you may start, sweetheart. All right, to start off, what are privacy invasion and identity theft? The meaning of privacy invasion briefly means a situation in which someone tries to find out details about another person's private affair in a way that is upsetting and often illegal. Whereas identity theft is defined as the crime of obtaining the personal or financial information of another person to use their identity to commit fraud, such as making unauthorized transactions or purchases. Next slide. Examples of privacy invasion and its effects. These days, the most common invasion of privacy is tracking people's physical location using the GPS data in their smartphones. The huge number of smartphones, the giant amount of data recorded, and the large number of apps doing it makes this privacy violation the largest in human history. But why should I care? I'm not committing a crime. What does that mean to me? Well, essentially, it means that an astonishing number of people have an uncontrollable access to extremely detailed histories of your movements. But so what? Is a person's location data really so sensitive as to warrant concern? For most people, the answer is no. 
Do I really care who knows that I drove to the supermarket or which aisles I walked down? But what if my destination is to a courthouse or a therapist's office or perhaps a specialized medical clinic? Now it sounds much concerning. Next slide. Examples and types of identity theft. Identity theft occurs when a thief pairs a legal social security number with a fake personal information, such as a name, birth date, and address. The thief will then use this fake identity to apply for a credit card. Children can also be victims of identity theft. Imagine even children are exposed to such a crime. Criminals could steal a child's personal data and sell it on the dark web. Children, child identity theft occurs when a criminal uses a minor social security number to open lines of credit, apply for governmental benefits, apply for loans, or rent a place to live. And people I think stealing... No. Sorry? Can you please do not re interrupt us? You have a proper time to ask your questions. So please wait for that time. Yeah, um, please you keep check, your please? Oh, mic muted. Uh, Tell the end, Six of course, point. there will be time for taking questions no. and answering them. There's no one Thank interrupting. You. I believe there's a uh, like, background noise. Uh, all right, no worries. Just and a second, on. please, just a second. Okay, Ilaf, you can continue, please. All right, thank you. And people seeing children's identities stand to make a lot of money off of them. In 2019, an identity fraud ring of eight people was exposed. Together, they had made up to $420,000 worth of fraudulent purchases using children's social security numbers that they had stolen. Now, take a look at this graph that represents the types of identity theft. You can notice here that credit card fraud, which is the most dangerous types of ID theft, took the highest position among the others, scoring a total of 133,015 records. Next slide. How to prevent someone from invading your privacy or stealing your identity? The single most important action you can take is to reject location permission for every app that is not necessary. Additionally, limit the personal information you share on social media like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. Be careful when opening emails from unknown senders as they, they might be hackers. Secure your devices with antivirus softwares. Always pay with cash in sketchy situations and always carry cash with you. One way thieves can steal your identity is through searching in dumpsters for any paper that has any private information. So tearing up private records and statements before throwing them away is essential. Know who you're dealing with. Whenever anyone contacts you asking for private identity or financial information, make no response other than to find out who they are, what company they represent, and the reason for the call. What, do, what to do when you suspect harm? Do not wait for an unknown charge to appear on your bank statement. The very first thing you should do is to immediately call your bank requesting to cancel the card or just freeze it. Change your social media passwords and usernames. In worst scenarios, a huge damage would have occurred to your bank account or leakage of so much private information, and you could do nothing now to stop it. In that case, you'll have to handle the case to legal authorities to punish those hackers. Identity theft can happen to anyone. Secure your privacy now better than later. Thank you. Wa alaikum no, assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, this workshop is a public workshop and all questions can be asked by the end of the workshop. So please. Listen to the girls carefully, and they have lots of information to provide us with. Thank you. And now with our fourth and last topic, online communities and social networks, presented by Aisha. As I mentioned, there will be a fourth quiz for you to try using the code of the NIFA. Thank you, Zainab. Thank you, Elef, for your information. You may start, Aisha. Okay, teacher. Online communities and social networks. Communities are all around us. We're part of many communities, whether they are communities made up of families, friends, or shared interests. Online communities take similar principles from in-person communities and make them virtual. Briefly, an online community or internet community is a group of people with a shared interest or purpose 
who use the internet to communicate with each other. Online communities have their own, their own set of guidelines and needs, like online community engagement, moderation, and management. Online communities and social network sites are a valuable tool for businesses in that it allows them to interact with like-minded professionals, customers, and other businesses. With all the benefits social networking offers, it is easy to overlook the risk that is involved. Said risks include threats of criminal activities, such as stalking, bullying, identity theft, and hacking. Also, users may fall prey to impersonators who can cause damage to their reputation and stand with the very people they are trying to network with. To make the best use of social networking while avoiding the risks, users will need to understand and follow a set of basic safety tips that are easy to remember and highly effective. Next slide. How to maintain e-safety in online communities and social network sites. First, we should know some examples of social network sites because by example, the problems becomes clearer. For example, Facebook, WhatsApp, WeChat, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Viber, Telegram, Vemo, Skype, and even more. Social networking sites are more popular than ever, and they've changed the way people use the internet. Social networking aren't a bad thing, but there are few risks you will need to be aware of. Next slide. Number one, age restrictions on social networks. Many social networking sites have an age requirement for creating an account. For example, Facebook does not allow any younger than 13 to join. However, many kids lie about their age to join. Keep in mind that these age restrictions exist to protect your child's privacy, so make sure you know what the minimum age is for each site. Number two, be cautious of sharing too much. Sharing some information is okay. Other facts can reveal too much about who a person is. For the sake of personal safety, one should never reveal their date and place of birth, home address, or phone number, as this could put them at a serious risk for identity theft. Also, it is extremely important that, that a person never reveal their credit card numbers, banking information, passwords, or social security number on any networking site. Number three, limit details about work history. On some social networking sites, such as LinkedIn, People can post resumes and other information that pertains to their work history. Work-related information can reveal too much about a person's personal life and can give criminals such as hackers personal information which may help them to hack into one's account. Number four, once posted, always posted. Protect your reputation in social networks. What you post online stays online forever. Think twice before posting any personal pictures or personal information. Recent research found that 70% of the job recruiters reject candidates based on information they found online. Keep personal information personal. Number five, be honest if you're uncomfortable. If a friend posts something about you that makes you uncomfortable or seems inappropriate, let them know. Likewise, stay open-minded if a friend approaches you because something you posted makes, them, makes him or her uncomfortable. People have different tolerances for how much the world knows about them. Respect those, toler uh, respect those differences. Number six, keep security software up to date. Having the latest security software, web browser, and operating system is the best defense against viruses, malware, and other online threats. Number seven, 
know how to block unfriendly followers. Nearly every social networking platform gives users a way to protect themselves from harassment or unwanted contacts. When joining a social network, one should familiarize themselves with how to block any member. Once a person has been blocked, he or she will no longer have the ability to interact with the individuals who has done the blocking. Number eight, key password strong. Security is an important for one's security for one social so, social network account, as it is for their computer or any other account. Creating a strong password will prevent hackers from gaining access to one's account. When creating a password, it is important to choose one that consists of no less than eight characters. The characters should consist of letters, numbers, and symbols and should be changed approximately every three months. Using a password generator tool may help. Number nine, be careful of over-trusting. As a member of a social networking group, it can be exciting to gain new friends or followers. A high number of friends, however, is not always possible. Some friends can be problematic. They may have criminal, criminal intentions when accepting friends, choose people who are actual friends and know exactly who you are accepting. Number, number 10, control what information is shared with outside sources. When a person joins a social networking site, they should understand how that site uses their private information. A user's details may be shared with partners, advertisers, or other outside companies. Reading the privacy policy of the social networking platform will explain exactly how private information is used. The privacy terms should be rechecked re if a company is sold, as these policies may change. Now that you know all about online communities and social networks, show your smart, thoughtfulness, and mastery of the environment when you can create continuous, meaningful interaction with, with people around you, you open the door to an incredible transformation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aisha. Yes, Zainab. You're most welcome. To wrap things up, you're not safe from the dangers of malicious people of the internet. Knowledge is key. So awareness of the importance of e-safety and how to protect yourself is just the first step to be sure no one behind the screens can hurt you. But you know what is the second step? Actually doing something. After this workshop, you should pick up your digital devices, go through your passwords and strengthen them, visit the websites or apps you use and make sure you're safe on them and browse the contacts, messages and emails you have for anything suspicious. Well, our first suggestion is to start with your email account, whether it's Google or its equivalent. And now remember our college student, um, he was able to recover. He got his passwords back and his bank account too, but you can go ahead of him. You can get ahead of him by protecting yourself right now. Better safe than sorry. Thank you. Now we're done with the presentation. Time for some questions. If you were following with us in the previous slides and answering Nearpod questions, just go back on and ask your questions. And here's the code on the screen if you want to ask your questions right now. Your questions will be answered shortly. Please keep them relevant as well. Teacher, I can't join. No worries. Muhammad Talib, do you have a question? Teacher, you are saying for me that uh, I have to ask in airports, but I can't uh, can't join airports. You no didn't. Problem, Muhammad. Do you okay. have a question for the girls? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I have a question for the question? girls. What is the question, you Muhammad? Uh, no, no, not uh, yes, yes, yes. My question uh, 
Teacher, what what if you uh, if someone, uh, for example, a child was uh, doing, uh, يعني, a YouTube channel, he will be hacked and like this because uh, people will know informations about him. He they will know his uh, he will they will know. يعني, if they yeah. shared informations, they they can know informations about them. They can يعني. What do you mean? Do you mean that uh, if they are on a YouTube channel, it's easy for them to get their um, identities and uh, uh, information. privacy information stolen easily, you mean? Yes, that's what I meant. So, yeah, uh, we told you before, on the Internet, there are millions of people and your uh, identities and privacy and all your information is being sold to other Yes, uh, sold to other companies. So even you, all of us have our um, identities. Uh, our identities are being took, and our information. So yes, they will know of uh, information about about us. Teacher, I didn't know. Teacher, some some of the kids, uh, يعني, are so easy to uh, to hack. Teacher, uh, to be bully. Teacher, I ha teacher. Uh, there is a teacher there is a, a, a teacher there is a kid he was doing a youtube channel but do you know what he was doing he was sharing some information about him he was يعني, do, doing stupid things يعني, yeah Every that's why we under... make this awareness we have to yeah. aware everyone to not share too much yeah you are right you are right yeah, yeah. If you have a YouTube channel and if you want to open a YouTube channel, a channel, please do not share too much information with people. I have told you before, we have no, uh, we don't know anything about the people on the internet and we don't know about their real identities. So you have to be careful with yourself and with your, with sharing your privacy. Okay. Yeah. Don't share Sorry. personal information. What, what okay. you share in the internet will stay forever there. Remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you girls for your answers. Have yeah, question. now yeah. we have got questions to answer. We got some questions. Yeah, so. You've got questions. Okay, so Zainab, could you please read the questions? Yeah, I will read them. For the first question, are our information, security, and business priorities aligned with this in the school? Okay, uh, is this an information or question? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's our. What do you are think? our are our information security and business priorities aligned in school? Like, how do we trust the school? I guess is the question uh, with our information since it's a business in there. Okay. So, Zainab, oh, is, so it, one, is, someone is, it a, is it a question for staff or for the audience here? Let me answer this question. Uh, as for the, uh, yes, as for <laughs> this question, of course, the school's infrastructure and security system, inshallah, it's highly. Uh, secure it so yes you can trust the school system and the security network in our school thank you next question please okay next question um what can i do if someone starts to impersonate me i guess this is okay. a question under what can i do if someone starts to impersonate me i guess this is a question under Privacy invasion and identity theft. Yeah. Can I answer? Well, the first thing. Uh, sure. You can answer. Uh, teacher, yes. We will not talk with him. Uh, t uh, teacher, uh, teacher, uh, I want to say that uh, teacher, uh, yani, if. Uh, Yani, if someone anonymous called you, you didn't have to yani, uh, know who is. Yeah, and you didn't have to um, to uh, ask him a questions or uh, to be his friend or like yes. this. He can hack you. Yeah, yes, of, of course. course. Of course. Don't yeah. apply for unknown people and strangers. Yeah. yeah, the first, the first thing first to do is to ignore. Yeah, yeah. the second exactly. thing you got to do is to be open to everything, about everything to your parents. So they can know what is the right thing to do in this case, whether to hand the situation to legal authorities or just just ignore the hacker or this anonymous person. So first of all, yeah. you shouldn't speak to him. Second of all, be open to everything to your parents. 
Yeah, and one more thing. Uh, we've told you before that you can contact um, the, uh, we have security services provided by the UAE. Exactly. So you can uh, contact these security services and uh, you will get secure. Okay? Yep. Yeah, Zainab, uh, we've oh. got other questions or? Yeah, we got some uh, questions. Uh, so a continuation to the question, I guess it was updated for the impersonation question, is how yeah. can I protect myself against hackers? Well, yeah, simply as we said. Any... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, go on. Uh, as I mentioned, there are many antivirus softwares that are ready to install anywhere on the Internet. So get yourself one and you'll be safe against many hackers. This is the first thing you can do against any hackers. Second of all, as you said, to prevent this thing to happen is that you simply don't share many inf much information to the public, so you'll be in the safe zone. Yeah, and uh, try to strengthen your passwords. Don't like make it um, easy password, you know, or exactly. common sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and try, try to change to it each, uh, each three months because yeah. it's crucial. Yeah, as I yeah, mentioned, exactly. it should contain letters, numbers, and symbols. And symbols, yeah. Yeah. Not only letters, no less than symbols. eight characters. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes right. I don't get the password if it's stored. Okay, next question mm -hmm. is bullying the same as cyberbullying? What makes them different? Mm. Oh, so. Um, Bullying is actually when you bully someone and see him in real life face to face. This is bullying. Uh, for example, this could happen in schools mostly. So uh, cyberbullying differs from that is cyberbullying. It's on social media. So when someone bullies you for your appearance, for your uh, religion, for any other purposes on social media without seeing you, this is called cyberbullying. So this is the main difference. Yeah. Cyberbullying is when it is in social media. Bullying is, uh, is when uh, it is face to face. Yeah, it includes hitting, slapping. Yeah, and uh, they are, they got the same purposes actually to harassment or to um, abuse. Bring down the abuse, yeah. Bring down the, the purpose basically is basically more visual, basically the purpose more is visual one. and physical contact. Thank you, go. Of course. Okay, yeah, I myself okay. have a question here as your teacher. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, of course. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. What, now, what do you think? Which one is like more dangerous? More effective. Cyber, yeah. The mm. cyberbullying or the bullying? To be honest, mm. it depends. Uh, it depends. Yes. Yes, it depends because sometimes cyberbullying could uh, include um, spams, Hacking. spam messages. So more than one uh, person could bully. Uh, a person unfortunately and also for the but for me I can see uh, bullying is actually more, more dangerous, hurt, dangerous yeah. Yeah. Or, because it includes hitting it includes mm -hmm. physical and actually uh, yeah uh, when exactly. the bully bully see uh, the, the the person who is being bullied actually and he doesn't care about that if he cried of uh, if he is sad, so I think this is even more uh, harsh. Let me see. Yeah. 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 More than uh, harsh. So, than so uh, and cyberbullying, it can make it easier for the cyber uh, bullied uh, per people because when they bully others, they don't see the reaction. As I said, they don't see their faces. They don't see them crying. They only just wrote the message, sent it, and closed their phones, yeah. and that's it. So and, uh, they don't care about them. Yeah, yeah so they, the they it makes it easier to continue. Yeah, sorry, Elaf. Yeah, you can continue. It's okay. Uh, I'm saying that simply the person who is being bullied can just block the hacker or block the bully, and the person the course. problem is solved, and they're reported to yeah. uh, the school if it was someone from the from the school or speak about it to his parents. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Now, now you the, the proper channels as well. Like the, yes. the authority, mm -hmm. the police, and yeah. report that. Yes. Exactly. Do not forget that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now, with Other the next question, is how can I encourage my kids to speak up if they are cyberbullied? How to encourage your kids? Um... I will answer that. Wait a minute. 
because think I, about that. This is a very um, nice question. question, a smart question. Yeah, yeah. Smart yeah. Question. yeah. I actually mm -hmm. answered that in my part as well. Encouraging your child to speak up is firstly, you need to be as close as possible with your child. I don't need to actually remind you with that, but that's a reminder. You have to be close, as close as possible with your child because to make it easier for them to confess, because if the child expects to be scolded immediately, if they uh, confess something or not, to, if they confess something or not, they will start to bottle up. So you have to be like open with your child and more patient. That's the first thing to do. Yeah, you should have an open dialogue. An open dialogue will, like, it will worth a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, definitely. Uh, just adding to that, always make sure mm -hmm. that your child believes in himself or herself. Give them, like, their high self-esteem. Trust, trust confidence them. Confidence and trust them. Yes, always make them believe and know that you trust them 100% no matter what. Thank you yeah, so much believe in for your, all your answers. Yes, mashallah. Uh, You're mostly welcome, teacher. Zainab, yeah. we have got other questions too, or that's yeah, it? Yeah, we got a lot, actually. Should we <laughs> ask? Uh, we'll we'll uh, Zainab, if you wouldn't mind, can you share the screen with the questions so that our Surely, audience uh, can uh, uh, so I was about to ask her to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't now, expect please, that girls, number of questions. Girls, please keep mm. in mind that we have to end up by 12, okay? Because we yeah, have yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've got only yeah. 10 okay. minutes left. Yeah, you guys, so, for, us, for your to sessions to start. I'm really <laughs> yeah. sorry for everyone. I wish we could continue more. And thank you all for participating. But we've got only 10 minutes. And this is the 18th question. And we've got or we've received 30 <laughs> yeah. questions. So, so long. <laughs> We'll yeah. yeah, definitely we'll try to answer as much as we could. Thank you, Badriya. <laughs> oh my God. You're, uh, so, you're so sweet and cute too. Yeah. So, uh, yes, let's carry on and please do yeah. forgive us if we need to finalize or end the workshop by 12 because the girls need to attend their classes as well. Yeah. Uh, if you do have a class, Which yes. I you cannot enter Nefut. No problem. We're almost done. Just hear us. Yeah, you can ask your question orally if you are having any yeah. questions. Yeah. Should we can I say one thing, please? AP security. And um, how can yeah. we activate? Excuse me? Who's this? Yeah, me. Can I say one thing, please? Yeah. Yes. Leia? Is it, is it Leia? Yes, Ms. Sora. This is Mr. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, just I want to say, girls, I'm proud of you. Thank you very uh, much, Marvelous uh, Workshop. You are amazing as usual. Thank, 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 thank you, girls. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you so we much for your it. attendance. Yeah, we yeah, really so appreciate it. We're honored. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, teacher. All right. And it's getting back to the question. Should yeah. we activate Should we activate MC? Mac A fee? Security, security and how we can we activate it actually you shouldn't um go for this uh, kind of uh, vpn or antivirus specifically like there's other options there's also one built in for windows if you want to try mm -hmm. it and if you want to activate it you should go to the website itself and choose your plan because it is uh, premium oh. yeah and always yes. sign for authorized accounts uh, uh sorry websites not uh any website uh, sketchy, sure. sketchy yeah. website. Give your information to an authorized website. Always remember. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Next question, yeah? Yeah, I How think it has some questions here. If I told um, my mom, what uh, would my mom do? Do. Well, that depends. Yeah. That depends on your we mom, need, which in no, what actually, no, no. does... Wait a minute. Okay. I told you before, children need parental care. Parental care is um, containing the child and allowing him to grow. So the first protection line for the child is the parents. So if you tell your parents, your parents will do everything, just everything to protect you. So be assured, be reassured that your parents is go are going to protect you. What will your mom do? They are adults and they know well what they they are going to do. 
So yeah. just feel feel free to report to your mother because she know well, she knows well about yeah. everything in life and she has to protect you as a parent. Exactly. Yeah, if you're not feeling comfortable too much uh, uh, about your mom, you can just inform your dad instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or you can you can inform your teachers instead. That is yeah, a good of idea Any too. Other. Your but let me tell you this: you have to be comfortable with your parents before being comfortable with others. Your parents yeah. are like your family. You have to be the most comfortable with them. So don't forget. They exactly. They know the right thing to do. All right, next question is and using okay. a VPN. Is using a VPN to use a fake IP address instead of my real IP address so I don't get uh, doxxed by hacked by hackers legal. DDoS. Um, mm, DDoS, yeah. Miss, we join your foot. Well, yeah, the questions, join. if you have a question, you can simply uh, leave it in the Nearpod or ask the the girls here, but remember, we only got seven minutes. So, uh, girls, Abdurrahman Saleh, he has a question for you. So, do you think it's better to use a fake IP address, like by using a VPN application? Well, I, if um, I don't think if that... I remember correctly, VPNs are illegal, right? Yeah, especially yeah. So if they are illegal. So, so use to keep yourself in the safe place. zone, just don't use the VPNs. If you yeah. came to use VPNs, it's better, of course, to use your fake IP address. You don't want to be hacked by an anonymous hacker on the internet by using your real IP address. Yes. Got it? Yeah. So basically, do not use VPN because it's illegal from the first place. Next question, please. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, yes, thank you. Let's read Muhammad the question. Teacher, uh, okay, okay, okay. I will say I am Hamad. I am Hamad Talib. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yeah. What was your Do question? You have a question? No, he broke up. Okay. Muhammad, are you here? Getting. Yes. Uh, carry on. Okay. Okay. Someone blocked me so many times. <laughs> okay. Just don't you follow your again? question, Muhammad. Yes. <laughs> My question was, uh, teacher, uh, uh, if uh, if uh, someone anonymous called me, يعني, I will say for the policeman or I will say to my parent, teacher, if I didn't want to <laughs> do like this, I can't block him like this. I didn't have to call my police, uh, the policeman or uh, my parent. I can't block him if I want, yes? Okay, blocking someone, they will, they're able to make, create a new account and come to your account again. So reporting it from the beginning is preventing it from happening again. So that's what I'm saying. If, yeah. so if you block someone, they will make a new account and come to you if they are insistent. Okay? Yeah, it's that's better to inform your family. It's better to inform your parents. And always remember yeah. that hotline number is 116-111, so that's 116-111. Thank you, Muhammad, yeah. for participating. Yes, the next question, please. There is a question. What can I yeah. do if I meet someone online, gave him personal information, and then he suddenly disappeared? How can I know if a website is, is, if safe, is safe or not, he mean? Okay. All right. So uh, if you met this yeah. person online, you gave him his personal information and then he suddenly disappears. If you know this person well, you know that he has... Elaf, you're muted. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know how, who muted me. All right, uh, I'll carry on. So, um, mm. of course, you know the situation this person is going on if you know him well. So you don't have to worry if this person disappeared suddenly out of nowhere. But of course, this person mm. told you before that he's going to disappear or whatsoever. Yeah, but just um, you can speak up about it. 
Yeah, and in the first place, don't give personal information. Try to avoid giving personal information in social media, especially like exactly. seeing someone face to face is better. And if you know someone in person, it's better to give him a personal information. But do not give any any person like any stranger on the Internet um, personal information. So that exactly. that couldn't happen again. Yeah. And what he said, how yeah. can I know if a website is safe or not? You can simply uh, know if this uh, website is authorized or no. Is it an official website or not? So according to that, you can just check it from, um, uh, I think it's written.ae or dot something. So you can just make yeah. sure about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. No, no. Uh, in that case, you can know if a website is safe or not. Other questions? Okay, I believe this should be our last question. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for all the, thank answers, you. the questions. Yeah, yeah, thank you for listening, watching, and participating with us. And thanks a lot. always remember yes. that yes. safety is never an accident. Can you please you close your mic so you're trying to wrap things up? Badria? <laughs> we have Badria. She wants to ask a question. I yes, think. she wants to ask a question. Badria, yeah. do you have a question? Yeah. 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 If you got a friend and he's coming to your house all day, uh, we, we don't need to talk with him or not talk with him. If he's um, coming to your home. Friend, you, know, <laughs> you invite <laughs> your friend, Badri. Of course you'll talk to your friend in your house. Yeah. <laughs> if someone yeah. is inviting you all day and you don't want mm. to talk to him, just be in your room the whole day. Don't talk to them. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you, Badria. Thank, thank you, everyone, yeah, yes, for attending the workshop. I hope you. Bye. Bye. I have a question, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question Bye. before the end. Sorry, the time is up. So, yeah. The, yeah, unfortunately, the time is up. So, we're looking You guys are having sessions workshop. too. Yes. Thank mm. you all. Thank you. So, Thank you, teacher. I, I didn't have any question. I just want to say for you that your power, and your PowerPoint is so, your PowerPoint is so nice, and I love it. And thank you. I learned something that we didn't learn before. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We have a period in 15 minutes. Yes. yes. You can leave yeah. now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Miss Sarah, this is the great effort for uh, the great uh, 11 girls, and your uh, it is very informative. Uh, thank, thank, you. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It is very informative. Thank you for all of, of all of your efforts. Thanks everyone You're for attending. Welcome. And You're most welcome. Please make sure yeah. that our school yes, always you, encourage you. good and hardworking calibers such as great 11 girls. Thanks thank everyone. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much, girls. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Go to your classes, please. Okay. Yeah, guys, you're having class. Don't be late for your class. Please yeah. attend on time. Yeah. Be on time. Leave now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. You can leave. Bye -bye. Teacher, I, teacher, in this class, I learned uh, something for uh, for grade 11 and.